Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Love, Sex, and 30 Candles. Love, Sex, and 30 Candles is a South African drama based on the novel of the same name, and tells the story of four women who are all best friends with each other. As the new year begins, all of their 30th birthdays approach close, and they all gather to reminisce about their pasts and what they look forward to accomplishing in the future. However, their futures turn out to be a lot more complicated than they anticipated. Various problems come up that affect them both individually and as a group of friends, which not only gradually pushes them apart, but threatens to end their friendships altogether. This turned out to be another story of female empowerment, where girls come together to help each other in their time of need. The movie is okay with its approach to this concept, and it does explore some serious issues, but there's not much else about it that stands out. There isn't really a main character per se, as the movie gives pretty much an equal amount of screen time for all the women. Dick Coletti, Sade, Linda, and Nawazi all have their own baggage to deal with, respectively having a distant partner, to having an abusive one, to having a sick parent, to dealing with an unexpected pregnancy, and it's interesting to see them navigate through their issues. They all add a lot of variety to the story just by virtue of their own unique circumstances, and they have to address them in their own way. Even though they do help each other where they can, they ultimately have to resolve their issues on their own terms, and I like seeing the initiative the women have in this regard. The friends all have great chemistry together. There's a fair amount of backstory involved that shows how far back they go, but even without it, it's nice to see how close they all are. They genuinely feel like best buddies that have each other's backs, which makes the story more believable in execution. Just as they get along though, there are also times where they aren't on the same page and even at each other's throats. Sometimes it's as simple as a wedding being planned differently, or it's as serious as someone in the group cheating with someone else's man. Whatever the issue may be, it's good that the movie shows that friendships can have their fair share of both highs and lows. Even when the issue isn't directly related to friends, they're all still affected by it in some way. There's a lot of masking involved between characters where they act happy for others while remaining miserable about their own problems and pretending things are okay when they're not. It's an intriguing way of showing how varied the conflict is between them all. This being said, the backgrounds all of these characters have are only presented at the most basic level. They all clearly struggle with their own predicaments, but the plots themselves are executed rather predictably, to a point where it's easy to tell what's going to happen. Between Linda's family animosity, Shadi's controlling husband, Nawazi's pregnancy, and Dick Coletti's love triangle, nothing about them feels all that novel, and some plot threads about them are just missing altogether. I did feel bad for the characters, but only in a general sense, and not enough for me to get properly invested in them. There is one major scandal between the friend group that shakes things up a bit, regarding Nawazi's pregnancy and who the father is. I won't spoil who it is in this review, but it's revealed pretty early in the movie as to who it is, and I like the direction the movie takes with it. Again, it's pretty formulaic, as with most everything else surrounding the women, but it remains dramatically interesting to see who it is, what he thinks about the pregnancy, and how he divides the women involved. It's the one plot element that the movie was able to hold most of my attention for. And it's a shame, because everything else about the movie's story is a bit of a mess, mostly because of the fact that it follows four characters. Now, there's nothing wrong with having multiple characters in a story, but in this case, their plots feel half-baked and not fully realized. The story jumps around a lot, which often leaves details about the characters' lives undercooked or just absent altogether. I never got a proper sense of Linda's passion for filmmaking, or Dick Coletti's family dynamic with her partner Tobogo, or Nalwazi's fashion aspirations, because the movie's pacing is all over the place. Even the romantic entanglements, as entertaining as they are, still end up being confusing at times. Linda felt especially underdeveloped in this area, as she's supposed to be dating some guy in between all of her family drama, and he just doesn't have much screen time to bother caring about. The movie has a hard time reining things in and focusing on what truly matters. That's not to say that there isn't anything of substance in the movie, though. It addresses a lot of important topics that come up in everyday life, from marital problems, lack of fulfillment from work, and family dynamics, and I enjoyed seeing how the movie examined them. Even though it mostly grazes over them and doesn't really have anything new or unique to show, I appreciated that the movie approaches themes with a certain level of tact and maturity. It never plays anything up for laughs, and the drama generally feels grounded and realistic, which helped me connect better to the characters. The movie has a mellow tone throughout that makes it easier to process what happens on screen, which is helpful when there's so much going on at any given moment. However, this can work against the movie's favor too, as it ends up becoming too relaxed to the point of becoming boring. To be fair, a lot of that is because of the amount of dialogue spread across the story. There's so many supporting characters who interact with the main characters that it can be hard to keep track of what's going on at any given moment, and sometimes there isn't much going on anyway, which doesn't help either. There is something to learn from it though, with how it explores the broad nature of how disillusioned people people can become with their lives over time, and how relying on loved ones can help balance things out. Even though it could have gone further and stood to be more focused, it still gets its core message across. Overall, Love, Sex, and 30 Candles is an average drama that has a lot going for it, in both good ways and bad. If you like dramas that have multiple
multiple characters involved and don't mind lots of busyness in terms of plot, you might enjoy checking this out. For everything good about its story and characters, there's something else that holds them back from their full potential. I'm not sure how it fares as an adaptation, but as far as this version is concerned, it does well enough, just not as much as it could have. What did you think about this movie? Did you enjoy the various plots and characters, or did you find them confusing instead? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Love, Sex, and 30 Candles. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American comedy, you are so not invited to my bat mitzvah. Bye bye!